Welcome back for National Cat Week. We're showing you some big cats now. These tigers are at the Pittsburgh Zoo lounging around like many cats do. They have a a lot of the same characteristics as our household pets, only these, these guys, they could kill you. Yeah. And that's why our next guest left them at the zoo for today's visit. Henry, you don't want to bring, you don't want to bring the big tigers with you? Well, you, you have guns? new furniture. They start clawing on your new couch. I understand, you're going to be, right. Yeah, be Jill quite would a day. not be happy if we ruin the new couch. But you did bring a little friend with you. I brought a fennec fox. It's an African species of fox. In fact, the smallest canid species found in the world. And so they're three and a half pound, four pound. So cute. Um, dog species and um, very, very much like a wolf, a uh, social animal. They live, uh, male and female will live together for their life and raise their offspring. And so, they, they, uncharacteristic for foxes, which are normally solitary. Yeah, well, he seems very comfortable in your arms. He is. Yeah, is yeah. he like something that you could pet? Is he, oh, yeah, like, is he like, sort of like a cat or a dog? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't encourage it, but in parts of the world, people have them as pets. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not the best for them, but, you know. Well, Henry, we love having you here on PTL, but you made a special appearance on KDK last night. I did. I uh, was asked to help prognosticate the weather, as uh, uh, Punks Tony Phil says. Uh, but we looked at our animals, and we were looking for indications of what the coming winter is going to be like. And one of the things I've always seen is when they get fully furred, heavily furred, it's usually indicative of uh, a really wicked winter coming. And this is a red panda, so this is one of the animals These you These are red pandas, to? yes, and they get a big bushy tail. These are cold-loving animals, and you can see them year-round at the zoo. Uh, they love to go in the snow, but they get thicker fur as the weather uh, seems to be, you know, when it's going to get real cold. So right now, they, at this time last year, they had a thicker coat than they do now. Oh, so maybe we're going to have an easier winter. At least or transitioning. Winter. Maybe our first few months will be less. Easy. Yeah, might, so maybe so January, that, February. It'll, so it always hits January. If you want to predict Pittsburgh winters, <laughs> just say it's going to be cold in January, February. And so what about the reptiles, too? Well, we, uh, I did notice our alligator stayed active and eating longer. We just pulled in Otis, 420-pound alligator, and... Um, so he ate longer. The reason they quit eating, they're ectothermic, they're cold-blooded. They can't digest their food as the weather starts to, the temperatures start to drop. But he ate longer than he did in previous years, which is, you know, indicative of nicer weather. Nicer weather. How do you think the animals know? Like, how do they know to grow more, more for some, to prepare for some winters than others? Well, you, it, it's, it's hard to, to say. It could, you know, there's... Uh, a couple things that play in, you know, intensity of light. So as as the light starts to drop down, that tells them they're going into a different season. So they start to grow in response to that. How they get the thicker coat? Like my dog gets in very bad winters when it has a big thick mantle of fur off the neck and down his shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, it's pretty light. Okay. All right. So time will tell. We'll see in just a couple of short weeks maybe what's happening. Um, Everybody's getting on my case about singing Christmas carols, but we're talking about breakfast with Santa at the zoo already. We do have breakfast with Santa. Still a few tickets left. If anybody's interested, they can go online and uh, get into it. It's, it's a fun event. You get to eat breakfast, breakfast and lunch with Santa. Actually, they have both. Uh, and um, you can, you know, get your picture taken with Santa. It's, it's a festive time at the zoo. Only a few tickets left. And they bring animals. I've been thinking about Christmas before. And they bring animals like Hartley. Yeah. You <laughs> might see Hartley there. Uh, they'll bring out animals as part of their presentation. And also penguins. The penguins on parade, right? Penguins on parade starts, I think it's December 7th, if yes. I remember. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's a little later than uh, we normally do. But that's on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, uh, 1130. And it is a hit. Uh, it people is. come to the zoo just to see the penguins on parade. So it's really cool. uh, it's it's a great activity. Now, if it's over 50, we don't have the penguins go outside. So you have to check to make sure on a particular day the, the animals are going. Out. You can go on the website or call the zoo. Okay, great. Thank you okay. so much, Henry. And you can come meet Hartley and the other animals at the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium and make plans now for the Santa breakfast. Just a few tickets left and the penguins parade, so you don't miss out.